Going viral in December, medical student Shizebe Rezibe's illustrations will soon be published in a textbook. He highlights the importance of diversity in medical illustrations. A 2014 study by researchers at the University of Wollongong, Australia, of more than 6,000 medical journal images, noted that the vast majority of people depicted were Caucasian. More than a third were female, about 3% showed disabled bodies, and 2% featured older people. This invisibilization of non-white people in the medical community can have a real impact on their health to the point of being life-threatening. U.S. studies that calculated the 5-year survival rate of people with skin cancer show that 92% of white people survived, compared to 67% of black people. Black women are at least three times more likely to die from a pregnancy-related cause than white women, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention from the United States. As per his LinkedIn profile, Shizebere Ibe is passionate about contemporary illustration of black patients. He has worked assiduously to promote the use of black skin medical illustration and medical textbooks and public health materials. This has afforded him the opportunity to be featured in WebMD slash Medscape, Maryland Neurosurgery and Global Scalpers podcasts and other reputable institutions globally. Hello everyone, our guest tonight is Mr. Shizebe Rehibe, who is a well-known personality because of his medical illustration. So let's welcome him with a big round of applause. Hi, Shizebe, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you? Yes, I'm great, thank you. So recently your medical illustration have gone viral around the world. What is your main motivation behind your work as an illustrator? All right, thank you for asking that. So my motivation um, behind my work is to create more representation for the black people and to to be able to, to advocate for equity in healthcare through medical illustrations. Great. Uh, have you ever seen someone like you in a school book? Well, that actually very rare. Um, so from research, we just showed that about less than 4% of of drawings in, in medical textbooks are, are black people. There are just a very little number of drawings in of black people in medical textbook, uh, more white people. But for me personally, I have not seen it yet. I, I'm, I'm get to see that. Yeah. yeah. But there are a couple of black illustrations there. But you see, um, I found like it's uh, it's it's not funny, but it's important to show also that the history of black people is not only sum up in slavery and their hardship. And um, you live in Nigeria, right? Right. Yeah. I found that your message is even more significant because you live in a country where most people are Afro-Black and the school book do not take into consideration Afro-descendants with, uh, with uh, you know, the skin disease and uh, the, any, any kind of uh, health problems, which is unfortunate because in 2021, there are no excuse. Yes, that's right. Yeah, all right. But how did it make you feel to not see yourself reflected in school books? Well, well generally, um, it's, it's something, I mean, of, of course, for me generally, who has always been drawing generally, it's something of something that caught my interest. Yeah. You know, of course, some, some, some people didn't actually know that there was a problem. Some people were just, you know, used to seeing white illustrations and they didn't think of it as, as a challenge or as something difficult or something um, that, have, that, have been, that has been a buyer for a long time. Yeah. But for me, that has been an illustrator for, for, for a year and some months now. I realized that that has been a problem. And that's why I work towards addressing that. But I, I now understand that when people, when people see themselves more, they tend to have an interest in, in that particular subject matter. So for example, medical students in training who haven't had the opportunity to, to see themselves more in medical literature, 
didn't really have the interest or may not have the interest, you know, in yeah. learning. And and that's the premise of learning. That's the foundation of learning when people consider themselves more. Because when the drawing went viral, I had a mother from the US reach out to me and said uh, she showed the drawings to her children. And mm-hmm. they said, oh, I see myself now. So now I have more interest in study medicine. Amazing how just black drawings can be able to influence decisions in, a, in, in choosing a career. So I think it has a, 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 a great role in playing in medical student interest in learning. Yeah, I agree because for me too, like when I was a child, I felt that there was something wrong in my environment because my child's mind was never exposed to men or women with my skin color and history books, uh, cartoons or uh, science films. And unfortunately, this led uh, to an inability to associate a black person with uh, a medical profession. And because of the fact that there's not visual role models uh, and school book or different illustrations. And if I can make a parallel of it, uh, the findings of Marie Curie, Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton were taught to me throughout my schooling, but I've never heard about like black scientists who contributed to the advancement of science or I'd never, I never saw them into illustration. So I think like this is related to what you're saying. And um, I have a question uh, for you that it can be personal, but you know, share what you want to share. Um, can you share with us what diversity, equity and inclusion mean to you and why uh, they are important? All right, thank you for asking that. So first of all, um, I'm going to take time to explain what diversity means to me. So diversity, you know, from popular words means diverse, you know, variety, right? Yeah. And uh, it's also important to know that people themselves are not diverse, right? But community have to be diverse, companies have to be diverse, health system have to be diverse. For example, you know, there is a mis- there is a uh, misconception of what of diversity. So. When we talk about diversity, it's not that people themselves are diverse. Because if you talk somebody as diverse, it simply means that the person is inferior to what you're comparing the person to, right? Mm-hmm. So if you say that black people are diverse, it simply means that the white are dominant over the black. That's what it simply means. So people are not diverse, but communities are diverse. So it simply means so if for example I have a I have a hospital, right, and um, and I'm considering unemployment, right? And I'm considering being diverse. It simply means I will employ the black person, right? I will employ the white person. I will employ a, 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 an Asian person. So that's what it simply means to be diverse, to include a variety of people in your ecosystem or your community. And inclusion, and because I, 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 I say this a lot, inclusion simply means giving value to that person, all right? To that person that you have yeah. been diverse towards. For example, um, I, I make this story, uh, for the, I make example a lot. Diversity, diversity is being invited to a party, for example. Then inclusion is being asked to dance on the stage. Yeah. Right? So it's one thing to invite somebody to a party. It's the same thing as inviting somebody to a company or to a hospital, right? You you employ a, a black a black staff, or you, you employ, a, for example, an, an an Islamic staff, for example. Then inclusion simply means that you you're giving them that in your in your hospital space. You give him a place where he can worship, right? A place where he can he, he, he can exercise his faith or his value. So that that's inclusion. And equity simply means that everybody, irrespective of your color, your sex, your gender, deserves an equal right and equal respect. So that's that's to me what the three is mean. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, this is it. I totally agree. <laughs> you couldn't have said it better. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it's true because at the end of the day, like we're part of the society and everybody should be right. celebrated. That's true. Yeah, I've read articles that uh, that are related about the topic, like uh, you you just speak about, and it's first the first article. It's in the USA, the Institute of Medicine report name on equal treatment asserts that conscious and unconscious bias of providers may affect treatments delivered and contribute to health disparities. 
As per another study conducted in 2016 in the United States, Black Americans are systematically undertreated for pain related to uh, Caucasian American because of false beliefs about biological differences between Black and Whites. For example, Black people's skin is thicker than White people's skin. And moreover, participants who endorse these beliefs rated the Black versus the White patient's pain as lower and made less accurate treatment recommendations. These findings suggest that individuals with at least some medical training hold and may use false beliefs about biological differences between Afro and Caucasian to inform medical judgment, which may contribute to racial disparities in pain assessment and treatment. I had to say the first author of the study is Kelly Huffman. As a medical student, can you share with us your opinion on that topic? So um, the issue of racial bias, bias has been a long, long issue that people have been talking about for a long time. And um, it's, it's amazing to understand that this is what probably call an implicit bias, right? Where there's an unconscious prejudice, unconscious approach, un unconscious prejudice towards a particular set of people. So simply because you are black um, means that you are ought to be strong and not receive healthcare attention. Simply because you are black, simply, I had a story uh, yesterday from a, a black woman during my interview. She told me that she went to um, to to a dermatologist because she felt she had skin cancer, right? So she went to a dermatologist. The dermatologist said that black people don't have skin cancer. Amazing what? to know that, that that's amazing to know how the bias <laughs> has been able to cut down deep into the system, yeah. right? So it's 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 an unconscious act, right? Has been passed down from generation to generation, and. Um, it has affected a lot of healthcare outcome, and I say this a lot that there will not be an inclusive system, right, or, or a diverse system, right, where there is no representation. Because representation, I believe, precedes all of these. If we are able to represent people through our artworks, through our uh, our voices, through our songs, and all of that, it has a way of creating an ecosystem that is very inclusive. So healthcare by healthcare by has been uh, a long thing for a long time. You know, people say um, because in as much as that uh, our skin is different, right? It's also important that that's one reason why black people should be represented because the way skin condition, for example, represents on black skin is different from how it represents on the white skin. Yeah. And because of this on, on, on contrast bias, right? The the stakeholders, I would say, have not taken into consideration. To represent the black people, which is quite very important. So, I, 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 and I think that the only way to address the issue of healthcare bias is to create, uh, is to be, to be more representative of the of the biased people. Yeah, I agree. And um, if I can add, like black women are at least three times more likely to die from a pregnancy-related cause according to the Centers for uh, Disease Control and Prevention from the United States. And uh, there's less, and they were, I, I've read that there were also an American study that uh, make a statement that uh, only 3% show disabled bodies and 2% featured older people when it comes to uh, medical illustration. So this is an issue and we need to put that up front so that the problem can be resolved in the long term. Um, wow. What are your long-term goals? All right, for me, my long-term goals is to um, to be able to set up an initiative, which I'm working towards doing that, and set up an in initiative that would focus on empowering young Africans like me to major in an area of expertise like me. So now, because the goal is to populate black illustrations. Uh, because once it's once it's become one when it become uh, this drawing becomes um, popular, right? It's uh, it, it will become a normal thing. People will be used to seeing black illustrations. Yeah. And I believe that the only way to do that is to train young Africans who are passionate also to create these drawings. Because as a self taught illustrator, I, I had to get a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties in learning these things, and I want to be able to train young people like me to understand the process in creating art like this. And to make the drawing popular, so basically, I have a long-term goal, and to and one of the, my goals also is to create medical textbooks, right? That will be black illustrations that would be as um, 
as a reference point for medical students who are you know, in training, in as much as other publishers, other uh, like uh, other big time publishers also yeah. also continue to be diverse in their in their publications now. Um, so it's it, for me my long term goals uh, as a medical illustrator is just to focus on a bigger initiative that train people and to create textbooks also partnering with a lot of uh, writers right, to create textbooks. So basically those are two major goals that I'm working towards. It's going to be a long-term goal. It's going to be a long, long, and long-lasting term goal. But it's worth it. We need that. And um, if you had a motivational message to share, what would it be? All right. So um, it, it, it would be um, use your word to create your existence, right? Yeah. Because um, I'm going to share this story very quickly as a personal story. Um, some years ago, I was traveling to somewhere. Uh, being passionate about medicine, I love medicine. I love how doctors dress and all of that. So I, I stood in front of a hospital to board a taxi to travel, uh, and I, I looked back at the hospital and said, "Oh, how beautiful the hospital is! Mm -hmm. I hope someday I will be able to go into this hospital." Right? I, I it, it's amazing to know that that same day I actually went into the hospital. Right? I actually went into the hospital. But not as a medical doctor or a medical student, but as a patient. Because while coming back, I had an accident that led me to that same hospital. Mm -hmm. Right? Then it was done on me that I had said something that related to that. But I, I, I didn't actually specify how was I going to hospital. So is it as a doctor or as a medical student? Then I understood that my words were my tools to create my existence. So to everybody out there who wants to live a great dream, who wants to live a bright future, it's important that your words are powerful. And you have to use your words to create your future and to create yes. good opportunities for yourself. Yes, that's that's true. Everybody has a talent, and it's it's a, it's important to use it for a better world in the long term. And I have quotes uh, that's related to what you just said. A diverse mix of voices leads to better discussions, decisions, and outcomes for everyone. From Sundar Pichai. And um, when we listen and celebrate what is both common and different, we become wiser, more inclusive, and better as an organization from Pat Waydoors. That's so nice. She's a better. Thank you for your time. It was great meeting you. You have, a, you have given me a clear overview of your amazing journey. Take care and best of luck with your studies. Thank you. Thank you for having me.